Hello, my name is Cody Bills. Thank you for joining us today. We have a special segment on working capital and your risk management plan. Joining us today, we have TJ Wilson out of Northeastern Kansas. He has 17 years of ag lending and bank management experience. He's also actively involved in a corn and soybean operation. Also joining us today out of Chicago is Josh McClure. Josh is a senior market advisor and broker for FBN Crop Marketing. Wide variety of experiences uh, with farmers all across the US. TJ, let's get right over to you. I, I think the, the first thing that I'm curious about is, I mean, you have a wide variety of experience, 17 years uh, working in ag lending, and you've seen all sorts of operations, very successful, very disciplined. Um, you've also seen operations that are struggling, but tell me some of the common mistakes that you've seen in regards to financing and a solid risk management plan. You know, obviously one of the biggest challenges uh, when it comes to any type of farming operation and, and what causes a lot of issues is working capital shortage. Uh, making sure that you have enough short-term lending capacity and enough working capital out there to do a lot of what you need to do uh, is definitely a big caveat. So you know, we see major challenges in a lot of different scenarios, especially in risk management to be able to do a number of things that need to be done. Obviously, working capital uh, is the key one. Working with a lender that maybe doesn't understand uh, risk management practices or a lot of what you're trying to do in your different um, strategies uh, to try to protect your downside risk. Uh, not working with an advisor is, is something we see a lot of people that it's just a complex market. Uh, anytime you're dealing with uh, all the different arrays of, of risk management that are out there. So working with somebody that truly understands what they're doing. Uh, the other challenges out there, make sure that you're truly hedging. Uh, you know, make sure you, you do what you need to do to protect your crop. Don't get too involved into the speculation side of things. Not understanding your cost of production. You know, obviously the markets really don't understand your cost of production, but you need to understand them to be able to make the decisions you need to, to make to be able to protect your bottom line. And then the biggest challenge that we see is lastly is just timing of cash flows. Uh, you know, knowing when your payments are, knowing when you have to prepay, when you have to do expenses, and being able to time your risk management plan around those uh, those different cash cash flow issues. TJ, those are all uh, great uh, great observations, and I think we could just dig into each one of them and talk for uh, for a while, have a good conversation. But the first one stands out to me: not enough working capital. Obviously, you need capital to be able to pay your bills. But can you tell me specifically what not enough working Working capital means to a risk management plan? Yeah, obviously the old adage is cash is king. Uh, so making sure that you have enough working capital or cash or liquidity on hand to be able to do a lot of things, you know, makes you a lot more proactive in managing your operation. Uh, anytime you can be proactive versus reactive, puts you in a lot more optimistic position. Now, what this allows you to do is, is take advantage of a number of different risk management opportunities, whether that's picking up on basis opportunity or storage opportunities or a number of different things. Uh, you know, not having enough working capital also limits your ability to utilize some of those different working uh, risk management strategies. So there are a lot of issues when it comes to that. Um, you can't necessarily use options as much. You can't do as much hedging, uh, being able to make margin calls and put yourself in a lot of a lot of different scenarios that definitely benefit your operation going forward. Josh, you just heard TJ and he had a great list of, of things that we really want to be aware of when we were working through our risk management plan throughout the year. You know, he had not enough working capital, speculating versus true hedging, not understanding your cash flow, um, not understanding your cost of production and not working with a market advisor. But is there anything in particular that you think that maybe isn't on that list uh, in regards to financing and a risk management plan? Well, when I think about producers that are new to hedging, whether it's just options or all derivatives, futures and options, I think that the biggest mistake is being overly emotional in making margin calls. Margin calls most of the time are a sign that what you're hoping for is actually happening. It doesn't seem like it when you're ACHing 10 or 15 or $20,000 in, but you place that hedge on some part of your crop because you weren't willing to make a cash sale. When we make a margin call, usually the market is going up since we're naturally long. And so our hedges cost money when the market moves higher. However, that market moving higher means that the rest of your unsold grain has also appreciated. And frankly, it's really pretty rare to be 100% hedged. So the opportunities almost always outweigh the margin calls. That is to say, you still have a rooting interest for the market to go higher. The key is to focus on farm profitability above all else. 
missed opportunities can cost just as much as margin calls, sometimes more. Got it. Got it. And, and you know, one thing that I think is, is a misconception out there is, is that you have to have a significant amount of working capital to have a disciplined risk management plan. And I think that's a, that's a, a great question because obviously a wide variety of tools that you can use, but how much capital do you need to execute a disciplined risk management plan year in and year out? Uh, to be honest, it doesn't actually have to take that much. Uh, there's different tools to manage your price and revenue risk, some of which cost very little, while others have embedded financing built right in. Head to arrive contracts, which often are the least capital intensive, often cost more. They limit your delivery location as well as basis opportunities. Crop insurance, on the other hand, has built-in financing, allowing you the benefit of the risk management for months, sometimes a year actually before you have to pay for it. In the case of margin, uh, margin protection, uh, uh, you know, today is September 29th. This is something that's just going off here in a couple of days. Um, uh, futures contracts, on the other hand, they may take more capital to maintain, uh, but they have fewer fees. Uh, and they have the advantage of retaining basis and delivery optionality. Uh, options can cost more due to, due to time decay, but they're incredibly flexible. They allow you to regain loss to optionality uh, or honestly not lose it in the first place. Uh, the, the, the thing to remember is that there's infinite ways to combine these tools. The key here is creating a repeatable, disciplined strategy that's optimized to your risk profile. How much capital you have available, whether you have storage, when you prefer to make sales. This is where having an advisor can be really valuable, helping you build an appropriate strategy that's not speculating, and at the same time, helping you get comfortable with the what-if scenarios. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today here, TJ and Josh. I think these are uh, great concepts, certainly good reminders for all of us as we move into the next crop marketing year. I, I think one of the big takeaways for me is that when you, when you create a risk management plan, you want to put as much emphasis on being proactive instead of reactive. And I think that's one of the big uh, areas where planning uh, your cash flow, understanding your cash flow, understanding your working capital is going to allow you to be more proactive instead of reactive. And, and finally, being disciplined, writing down your risk management plan and working with someone that can help hold you to account. Make sure that you stick to that plan. You write it down and you stick to it. And the reason why we do that is because it needs to be repeatable year in and year out. You need to be able to execute a strategy. Otherwise, you're going to be overcompensating one year. You're going to be doing something else the next year. And it makes it really hard to have consistent results over 10, 20 years. And, and so those are the, the big takeaways for me uh, when it comes to financing. Again, appreciate it, TJ and Josh. Thank you so much for joining us, and I look forward to uh, seeing you all on the next episode.